First off, welcome to Scorpio season. And second off, welcome to this Taurus lunar eclipse. Boo. This is a big one, okay? This eclipse season has been wild. Let me know down below how you are feeling these eclipses. Both of them are Venus ruled, so there's so much coming up in the collective about feminine energy, receiving trust, relationships, beauty, pleasure, like where we really find our fulfillment in life. And that's so much what this Taurus lunar eclipse is going to be about right as we are entering Scorpio season. So this is a big one. You do not want to miss the beginning of this video because the beginning is where I go over all of the juice, all of the energetics of this Taurus lunar eclipse, what it's really bringing up for us as a whole, and then I go over what it briefly means for your rising sign because really the rising sign horoscope is just where it's happening for you, right? It's pretty much the same kind of energy, it's just happening in a different area of life, right? Which yes, can sometimes add some more, some more details to things, but Overall, you want to watch the beginning of this video because if you're not, you are missing out, honey. So let's go ahead and get into it. If you are new here, my name is Tawny Michelle. I'm an astrologer and I am a multidimensional coach. I do a lot of different things. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you are missing out. I post on my Instagram and in my on my Facebook so, so much every single day. I do lives. I do all kinds of things for personal development, self-development. Like if you are another healer, if you're another business owner that helps other people in any way, you do not want to be missing out on my social medias, boo, because I have a lot going on over there. I also still do astrology readings and offer astrology services for now. So if you're interested in that, see the description below. And with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into this Taurus lunar eclipse and what it means means and then what it means for your rising sign. Okay, so first off, what the fuck is a lunar eclipse? So a lunar eclipse is a full moon and a full moon is when the sun and the moon are in opposite ends of the sky from the earth's perspective. So the earth is in the middle, the sun is on one side, the moon is on the other side, which really allows the moon to reflect the sun's light in a way to where we can see the whole entire moon. We can see her in her fullness. We can see her in her aliveness. She is just out there flaunting in the sky, right? Now, an eclipse is when the new moon or the full moon is aligned in such a way that they are aligned with the nodal axis. But basically the nodal axis shows us very karmic and faded events and shows us where the eclipses are going to be happening. And right now the nodal axis is in Libra and Aries, right? But the Taurus lunar eclipse is very close to the North Node in Aries, even though they're in different signs, they are close by degree. So this is a partial lunar eclipse. So it is coming with a lot more energy than just a normal full moon. So this isn't just your normal Taurus full moon, this is a partial lunar eclipse. And so it's coming with a lot more energy, which means that it can affect our moods, our sleep schedules, our energy, our emotions. A lot of things can be heightened at this time. We can feel this heightened sense of energy, this heightened sense of awareness, this heightened sense of feeling and emotion in our senses. And so definitely be on the lookout for these symptoms. We can also have trouble sleeping because of this heightened energy, right? We can feel a little bit more tapped in intuitively at this time. And this is the eclipse that is finishing out this particular eclipse season that started a few weeks ago with the solar eclipse in Libra. We've been in eclipse season. Eclipse season is always like a portal. It's like a time of massive change, massive transformation, massive energetic and karmic lessons kind of wrapping up, right? Uh, a massive new, be massive new beginnings. It's like a, a, a portal of transmutation, right? And so this lunar eclipse is really ending this eclipse cycle that we've been in. Anyway, so to know more about what this full moon and what this eclipse is gonna bring for us, we have to look Look at where it's happening and it's happening in the sign of Taurus. Now Taurus is an earth sign therefore it's a feminine sign and it is ruled by the planet Venus which is the feminine planet, the planet of feminine energy, beauty, pleasure, receiving, relationships, like all of the things that feel good and look good in life pretty much, right? So Taurus being ruled by Venus and being an earth sign is very much about the earthly physical 3D material pleasures that really activate our senses, that look good, that feel good, that taste good, that sound good, right? Like all of the different things that really activate us in a sense of pleasure and a sense of fulfillment and a sense of abundance and a sense of feeling just like worthy, right? Taurus has a lot to do with worthiness. It has a lot to do with value and quality, like the quality of things, the, the things that really fill us up 
and, and help us feel things in our bodies in a way of like, oh, this just feels so good. I feel so good with this or this makes me feel so good, right? So with this full moon happening in the sign of Taurus, it's really bringing up this energy of like, what is actually worth it? What is it that we actually want? What is it that we actually desire? What is it that's actually gonna fulfill us? What is it that actually is gonna bring more value, more stability, more security to our lives? Because those are also things that Taurus has to do with as it is an earth sign, a fixed earth sign. So as a fixed earth sign ruled by Venus, it wants to feel comfortable. It wants to feel secure. It wants to feel like it is fulfilled, right? And so with the full moon, lunar eclipse happening in the sign of Taurus. This is so, so much about our physical fulfillment and the embodiment of our worth and the things that make us feel good. So the big other thing, the other big thing with this eclipse is that the sun is in Scorpio right now, opposite of the moon because it's a full moon eclipse. And it is pretty much coming up on, the sun is pretty much conjunct the planet of Mercury and Mars, right? And so when we have these planets in Scorpio, the Sun, Mercury, and Mars, there is also this other polarity happening here of the things that are going on deep within us, the things that uh, don't feel so good, the things that feel disturbing, or the things that we need to let go of, the things that we need to cut off that are not operating for our highest good in some way, shape, or form. The, the lack, the scarcity, the, the shame, the you know intense feelings, the intense baggage that we've been somehow carrying, especially also with this full moon in Taurus, lunar, this full moon lunar eclipse in Taurus being conjunct Jupiter. It's also only a few degrees away from Jupiter. So there is this like higher perspective forming about what is good for us, what is going to fulfill us, what is going to give us a, a higher perspective, more wisdom, more pleasure, more fulfillment, what is worth it to us versus things that need to be changed and things that need to be cut out for us to feel truly embodied in this new sense of security, stability, and worth, right? That's really what this particular full moon lunar eclipse has a lot to do with. It is very much about changing and altering and you know taking action on the baggage the, the old things that we have been hanging on to, the old attachments, the old levels of shame, pain, insecurity, lack, scarcity that have been really holding us back from seeing our full potential and what we're worth in life, right? That's really what this is about at this time. You know, like this is a time to like really see how like really see our full potential in terms of abundance in terms of worth in terms of security in terms of you know feeling good embodying the the things that actually make us feel fulfilled and really cutting off letting go alchemizing transforming or changing the things that don't that that really is what this comes down to right because you know, Jupiter is also going to be opposite Mars. And so this is going to be a time where we're going to really see how maybe we've been holding on to our pain and holding on to like the insecurity and holding on to the darkness, but how it's actually keeping us stuck. It's like keeping us stuck in quicksand instead of, you know, catapulting us forward where we actually desire to be. You know, like the things that we actually want to manifest in our lives, the things that we actually want to fulfill in our lives, like the seeds that we actually want to plant in our lives. And so a full moon is very much about bringing things to fruition, realizing things, revealing things to us. And so this is revealing to us where we have been stuck where we have been stuck in the quicksand and, and allowing ourselves to be stuck in the quicksand and not moving forward to a, a better place because we thought maybe we deserved the quicksand. Maybe we felt we were unworthy. Maybe we felt we were in, insecure. Maybe we felt like, oh, this is just where I am, where I'm trapped. Like we've been under this illusion of being trapped when really we haven't been right? And so I feel like that's so much of what this lunar eclipse is really going to be about. And I had this really big realization last year that's really reminding me of this because for so long I was like on my spiritual journey and I was stuck 
and I for like a year or so I was like I just kind of got like I was still spiritual I still was like very self-aware and and all of that but I got very logical I got very rash rational and I wasn't really trusting in you know things as much I didn't have like a lot of faith I didn't have like a my belief in my spiritual connection wasn't as strong as it once was and I felt like I hit this like glass ceiling that I couldn't get past in my spirituality. It was like, why am I not moving forward? You know, like, and so I just kind of relied on logic a lot to get me through that time to do my readings, to, to show up and do my videos and stuff. I wasn't feeling as intuitive because I, I didn't feel as connected spiritually. So eventually I went through this like, you know, whole new awakening and I finally started like breaking through that like invisible limit I had felt for a while. And I realized soon after breaking through that limit that the whole reason that I was stuck and that I wasn't progressing, that I wasn't moving forward, that I wasn't feeling that spiritual connection like I once was, was because for so long, I was so big about like shadow work. Like if you've been here for a while, I used to say like, I'm not all love, light, rainbows and twin flames and unicorns over here, you know? And I used to like just really preach shadow work and, you know, making friends with your shadows and all of that. And I still definitely believe in shadow work. That is definitely one of the biggest places to start when you're on your spiritual journey or just starting your spiritual journey. But I got to a point where I couldn't like, I couldn't completely let go of my pain. Like it wasn't affecting me in the way it once did anymore, but I, I had had it for so long that I identified with it. And last year I used the concept a lot with the Scorpio eclipses. Like it's like you're carrying around a trash bag full of all of your old wounds and all of your old insecurities and all of your old traumas and all of this stuff. It's like you're carrying around this trash bag and it's finally time to let it go, right? And it's like, that's what I was kind of doing, you know, like back in like 2021-ish, like I was carrying around this old trash bag, but I had carried around it, I had carried it around for so long that I started identifying with it. I started identifying with being like more dark and more, you know, edgy and more, you know, all of those things. Like I, I really felt like I identified with it because I had to carry it for so long. I was just like, oh, I guess this is just who I am now at one point. And so I never really identified with being like light and grateful and and thankful and like, you know, love and light and all of that. Like, and because it felt to me like me letting go of that pain and me like moving on from that and me no longer identifying that, it felt like a like like I was gonna forget about it. Like it didn't mean anything if I could just let go of it so easy, right? And I feel like that's kind of coming up with this. It's like, where have we identified with our pain for so long? Or where have we identified with things for so long that really aren't the truth of what we're worth and who we are and what we deserve? And I feel like that could be a really, really big theme that maybe is coming up right now for some people. So let me know below if that's you. But this definitely is a time where we are expanding into, into something that feels more real into something that feels more reliable, more sustainable, more abundant, more fulfilling. And at the same time, we're letting go of some kind of internal fight, some kind of internal complication that maybe we've identified with for so long or that we've been holding on to or attached to for so long that is actually beginning to be poisonous for us, right? It's like we have to let this go if we want to expand and if we want to really get to the things that we desire in our life, if we wanna to get to stable, more secure ground, right? If we really wanna sustain something for the long term, if we really have this higher vision, this higher purpose, that, and if we really wanna be liberated from the old stuff, like this is, this is what's coming up for us to finally like break free from and remember and realign with that which is more stable, that, that which feels more secure, that which feels more fulfilling, more desirable, more abundant, right? More pleasurable. So that is what I'm seeing for this lunar eclipse happening in the sign of Taurus. Let me know down below if you stayed this far, comment the word badass so I know that you did. I love you, thank you so, so much. Also, let me know just for funsies, are you an OG? Have you been around since like 
the beginning since I first started doing tarot and astrology here and like the end of 2018. Are you new? When did you come in? Let me know. I'd love to know. Again, if you don't follow me on my socials, you are missing out, boo. So definitely go do that. So anyways, with all that being said, we are going to go ahead and get into what this means for your rising sign. If you would like anything more from me to book a reading, to follow me, to get into my coaching, whatever, see my description below. I love you guys and I will see you guys very, very soon. Alrighty, starting with you, my lovely Taurus Risings. I hope you guys are doing well. So this full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your sign, boo. It's been a little bit. You finally got a break. <laughs> finally got a break with the nodes finally moving out of yours and your opposite sign of Scorpios. And now we are back at it to really remind you, give you a little reminder of who the fuck you are and what you've been learning in the last year, two years now almost, right? This is really revealing to you some of the missing pieces of who you are, your identity, what you need to realign with so you feel more secure, so you feel more sustain sustainable, not sustainable, uh, stable, so you feel more fulfilled, so you feel more pleasured, so you feel more embodied in who you are, so you feel more expanded, so you feel like you can realize and see your potential again, right? But this may mean dealing with some conflicts going on in your relationship or with your partner in some way or with other people in some way. This may mean cutting some things off, this may mean rearranging some things, making some big changes, your partner may be going through some big changes, but this is a time to really realign with your own vision, your own individuality, your own sense of purpose, your own sense of meaning, your own perspective, you know, your, your own self. It's really a time to get back into your own self, your own embodiment, you know, like that is where you're really, really, really going to feel the most fulfilled. And that's what this lunar eclipse is, is really showing you right now right? What do you love? What's good for you? It's really revealing maybe even certain preferences you have, certain desires you have, certain likes, certain interests that you have that maybe you've forgotten or maybe you kind of got away from because you've been maybe swept up in other things or your relationship or, you know, something along those lines. But this is really revealing to you a way forward in terms of becoming more of who you are and you know realigning with what you desire in your life and who you desire to be in your life so let me know down below Taurus what you are noticing for this lunar eclipse if any of that is resonating for you and if you missed the beginning you need to go back and watch that because uh you're a Taurus rising and I went over your sign and you know everything this eclipse is going to be about so it's definitely going to resonate for you so thank you guys for watching if you'd like anything else from me make sure to see the description below and let's go ahead and move on to Gemini rising so for for Gemini Risings, this eclipse is happening in your 12th house. So this is a time of really realizing some things that have been going on behind the scenes. This could even be a time where you're feeling maybe a little bit like set free for from something that has been going on behind the scenes or something that you've been forgetting or neglecting. It could be a time where you are like remembering or realizing like where you need to realign your energy, where like what's important to you, what you value because maybe you've been swept up in certain conflicts or certain chaos or certain complications going on at work or with your health or your day-to-day -day routines in some way. And so this is a time where you could kind of get out of all the chaos and all the conflict and all the hustle and bustle of the day of your day-to-day -day life and really lean back into a sense of like pleasure and fulfillment and embodiment and, you know, rest and, you know, the things that actually make you feel fulfilled that you need to do for yourself that are going to keep your life like that it's going to keep your life feeling better overall and all the way around you know like the things that maybe you've been neglecting or putting off this could be more rest this could be maybe taking a mini vacation you know something like that that's really going to free up your space and and help you lean more into the present moment and lean more into the things that feel good for you right so, um, and this could also somehow involve like your family or your home in some way uh, with Venus being in your fourth house and, you know, kind of, you know, somewhat in like a very, very loose trine <laughs> to this uh, eclipse, but also ruling this eclipse. So this could definitely bring up something to do with your home and family as well, or your home and family being a part of this relaxation or this rest or this kind of like little getaway or whatever. So definitely let me know down below what you're seeing come up if you're a Gemini rising. I would really love to hear your feedback. And if you missed the beginning, you're missing out, boo. So go back and watch that. So Moving on to Cancer Rising, so this full moon eclipse for you, Cancer, is happening in your 11th house, so this is definitely a time where you could be, you know, 
seeing some new perspectives on the people in your life, your surroundings, your network, you know, your friends, different friend groups. It could be a time where you're around new people or different groups of people, a different network, you know, per se, or something like that. And where you're really realizing like all together maybe how far you've come like how 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 much you've been through and seeing things from like a really uh like a much bigger perspective than usual especially in terms with the people you surround yourself with and and how much you know value and worth have to do with that now right like i have a cancer rising friend and he has you know when the nodes move through um, when the north node was moving through taurus his 11th house like yours and he had all of this you know these eclipses happening there like it, it's just so funny because you know he's into astrology just like i am he actually learned from my astrology course <laughs> and um he's like yeah like all of my friends are just so different now like literally he narrowed his friend group down to like a few people and you know he really started only really associating associating with people that added more value to his life rather than so much chaos you know because before then there's a lot of people that he had in his life that were kind of just chaotic and messy and like you know kind of involving him in their shit and so um anyway so this could be something you know that you're reflecting on or something that you may have been through as well but either way you could at least just be noticing that there's something going on with your social life at this time or there's a big revelation or something really revealed about your social life or your long-term horizon in terms of your social life your community um your local environment you know maybe short trips and travels could be something that come up here too but you're definitely seeing something from a bigger perspective and you're also seeing what you've maybe outgrown or let go of or have changed or transformed in terms of the things that you used to be attracted to or the things that you used to love or the things that you used to be interested in that maybe you no longer are and so that is something i'm really seeing here for you if you're a cancer rising let me know down below if that resonates with you and what you are noticing come up i would really love to hear your feedback if you're a cancer rising so let me know below and if you missed the beginning go back and watch that boo so anyways for Leo Risings, this lunar eclipse in Taurus is happening in our 10th house because I'm a fellow Leo Rising, so hello. Um, this is happening in our 10th house of our career, baby, our long-term goals, our future, our horizon, like where are we going? What's our potential? What do we want in life? Like what feels good to us? What do we need to be embodied in? What's our future look like? What are our goals? What's our long-term horizon looking like? What's our big vision looking like for our lives? Like what's the overarching thing for our lives right and so this full moon is really really bringing up those topics and it is very close to jupiter so it's giving us a very expansive wide perspective this also could be kind of like a reflection this is definitely like a reflection on all of the things that we've been through since you know the beginning of 2022 and all of the things that have changed in terms of our career and our career paths and our long-term goals and our long-term trajectory in the world and you know what we actually want to do what we actually want to leave behind and all of that and so this is kind of getting realigned with our bigger visions that maybe came through in the last like you know almost two years now that maybe we kind of got off track with or something but it's also showing us like hey if you want to move forward if you want to expand what do you need to let go of what is still hanging on like what are you still attached to from your past or in your personal life or what garbage do you need to clean up there like what baggage do you need to clean up what things do you need to let go of what things do you need to like you know release what things do you need to like get rid of right like clean up in some way and so that is really what this lunar eclipse um in taurus is about for us if you're leo rising this could also be bringing finances into the mix and this could also be putting you in the spotlight somehow if you're a leo rising as well this could be something where you're in the spotlight or there's finally this really big change and shift that happens in terms of your career and in terms of uh maybe a long-term goal or a long-term trajectory it's like you finally are seeing and, and being revealed like something's being revealed to you where it's like oh, this is the path or this is the strategy or this is the way to getting there or whatever and this is what I need to release or let go of or what complications or chaos I need to let go of behind the scenes or in my personal life or in my private life to be able to expand and upgrade to this, right? If this was helpful for you, let me know down below, Leo, and let me know what you are noticing come up. I'd like to compare notes, boo. And if you don't follow me on Instagram or my Facebook, you are missing out, especially if you are another healer, if you're into spirituality, if you help other people, if you're a business owner, like any of that, you need to follow me on my Instagram and my Facebook, okay? So I love you, Leo. Let me know down below what you thought. Go watch the beginning if you didn't, boo. And let's move on. Alrighty, my lovely Virgo risings, this is for you. So this lunar eclipse is happening in your ninth house. 
So this is very much reflecting back on your values in terms of your viewpoints, your belief systems, what you, you know, how you kind of look at the world, your worldviews, your educational pursuits, you know, your, your big opinions on things, your big ideals on things, maybe foreign travel, and where you find value and worth in these things, right? And so this is like a big picture, big perspective, kind of coming in here, like a big revelation, big perspective shift, big picture kind of shift here happening for you that's really pulling you out of maybe the chaos or the confusion or the conflict of the mundane day-to-day -day stuff that you usually maybe sometimes get swept up in, right? It's like, can you hold a bigger vision? Can you hold you know, a bigger potential, a bigger possibility. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, you need to, because I actually just did a live stream about this today, about holding the void, like the space in between, like your vision happening in real life. And, you know, the, the, the space in between you having the vision and the vision actually being like a real life thing, basically, right? And I feel like some of that could be coming up for you if you're a Virgo rising, but this also really is gonna relate to yourself and your own sense of identity and how you may identify with some of your beliefs, your big worldviews, your bigger perspectives, and how you really find safety, security, comfort, and value in that and in this like how you find quality and like the bigger picture and the bigger context of your life right and the things that you're learning the your travel pursuits or whatever right so that is basically what i'm seeing coming up here for you virgo let me know down below if that resonates and if you didn't watch the beginning you're missing out so definitely go do that because uh it will tell you a lot more and you can apply it to you know this horoscope so i love you and we are going to move on to libra Okay, so my lovely Libra Risings, this full moon lunar eclipse in Taurus is happening in your eighth house of finances, investments, your wealth, and yeah, any kind of big financial decisions or shared finances, shared resources, loans, debt, you know, any kind of finances or resources that you share or collaborate, you know, that you share with another person or, you know, that you collaborate on with another person. And so this full moon is really bringing up those topics of like where are you know this could be like a big revelation or a big shift in terms of your investments in terms of really wanting to invest in yourself invest in what's worth it invest in the things that actually bring quality to your life and to your sense of wealth and to your sense of worthiness right and so this is also really showing you where there's certain complications old insecurities old lack old attachments that you know or an old scarcity mindset even maybe that you're holding on to in terms of you know that that may be holding you back in some way from really evolving and expanding into the more you know into the into the abundance that you want into the actual nice physical sustainable like solid secure comfortable things that you desire in your life and so that is really really what i see coming up here for you this could also have to do with some things going on behind the scenes or um something going on like related to your habits or something that you're kind of shutting detoxing whatever uh, behind the scenes that somehow plays into this with Venus in your 12th. So let me know down below what you are noticing coming up with this Libra. I'd really be curious to know and I'd really appreciate your feedback. And if you missed the beginning of this video, definitely go back and watch that because you do not want to miss out on that. So we are going to go ahead and move on to Scorpio. So for Scorpio, this lunar eclipse, full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your seventh house of relationships. So this is a big, big time about relationships for you. And it can feel very karmic. It can feel like really big endings are happening. Really big things are tying all together. Like you're really reflecting on just everything over the last couple years or maybe even longer. Honestly, like this is the last lunar eclipse in Taurus that's really ending out this like you know cycle of eclipses that we did have in Taurus and your sign over the last two years and so this is a time where you're really seeing the bigger picture here you're really seeing the bigger perspective you're really seeing the long-term horizon you're really seeing the past and how it all kind of connects together and how it's all kind of connecting and boiling up to this one point where you're like whoa okay I see what needs to change like where have you been really in relationships that aren't valuable to you or that you didn't value or that didn't value you like where have you been putting yourself in relationships that weren't actually worthy of your energy or that didn't actually bring value or add value to your life right like these are the things that could really be coming up around this time like 
security, sustainability, value, worth, um, quality in terms of relationships and the people in your life and how you may complicate that in some way, how you may have this internal struggle with that in some way. But this is really pointing it out to you. This is really shedding light on what you can't see within yourself that keeps attracting you to certain types of people that maybe aren't actually like worth it, right? That like it, it, it's not that you're better than or not that they're not worth it for someone, right? That's just not right for you. It's like it ends up being a relationship that maybe wasn't, you know, it isn't what you actually desired in some way fully, right? And so this is really getting clear on certain relationship dynamics um, because really at the end of the day, you're going to do good with a relationship that feels sustainable, that feels consistent, that feels safe, that feels secure. And if it doesn't feel like that, then you're gonna feel off or it may not end up working out, right? And so that's what you actually desire. You may think that you desire the certain level of like um, chaos and messiness and, you know, mysteriousness and all of that, but really you need sustainability, you need pleasure, you need simple, you need something that's stable and secure, right? So that is definitely what you could be noticing. This could be playing out in your friend groups or your network or your associations or the people that you know in some way in your social life in some way. So watch out for that with Venus in your 11th house too. But let me know down below, Scorpio, if that resonates for you. I'd love to hear your feedback and what you're noticing coming up for this eclipse. And with all that being said, we are going to move on to... Sagittarius. So for Sagittarius rising, this lunar eclipse is happening in your sixth house of your work, your health, your day-to-day -day routines, boo. So where do you need to really get realigned with something that feels more simple, more stable, more pleasurable, more secure, more sustainable with your work, your health, your day-to-day -day routines? Like you're really seeing the bigger picture here. You're wrapping up certain karmic lessons that have been at play for like the last two years, but maybe even longer. You're really realizing where you've had certain unconscious or subconscious habits that have really made it very complicated or provided a lot of chaos in your life that has held you back you know, old attachments, old habits, old addictions, old things that have really held you back from creating the sustainable, secure, comfortable life and lifestyle that you want for either your work or your health or your routines, right? And so this full moon lunar eclipse is really showing you like how you can get realigned with something more comfortable, more pleasurable, more sustainable, more fulfilling, and how you can start kind of letting go or cutting off or changing a lot of those unconscious behaviors and habits or behind the scenes things that are really draining you or per, like bringing in like a lot of lack in your life right and so this is like a chance to really kind of come full circle see things from a bigger perspective like really feel expanded in terms of your lifestyle in terms of your health your wellness your work all of that so um and this could really be affecting um, your career in a really positive way too and really showing you like what strategies or you know something that may need just some tweaking in your career that actually ends up playing out better for the long haul and actually gives you more of what you want in terms of your career and long-term goals so this is a really interesting one for you Sagittarius let me know down below if that resonates and what you do notice coming up for this eclipse I'd really really be interested to hear your feedback and if you missed the beginning of this video go watch it because you are missing out so with that being said, we're gonna move on to Capricorn Rising. So for Capricorn Risings, this Taurus Lunar Eclipse is happening in your fifth house. And so this is all about uh, what you love, what you what you like, what you're interested in, where your heart is, your passions, like your sense of play and fun and all of that. And so this is really kind of, you know, realigning you with those more creative things that you really got in touch with over the last two years. The places in your heart that really lead you to create right this creative energy right and it kind of is getting you out of the complications the chaos of maybe you know other people or your social life or your network or you know what's going on like in the world or with other people and it's kind of diving you like remembering it's kind of reminding you like this is where your heart is this is where your passion is like don't forget to don't forget to embrace the wealth of wisdom that's in your creativity that's in your heart don't forget to create don't forget to like really feel into the things that feel good and bring you a sense of pleasure and play and fun in your life 
right? So, um, and this could somehow lead into learning something new or taking um, a trip somewhere or your belief systems in some way as Venus is in your ninth. So let me know down below, uh, Capricorn, how that's feeling for you if that lands and what you are noticing coming up around this uh, lunar eclipse in Taurus. I'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you missed the beginning, go back and watch that because you're missing out. Alrighty, Aquarius darling. This full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your fourth house, boo. So this is a time that is reminding you to get realigned with that stable, secure inner foundation. This is a time that is really bringing up your home, your family, your private life, your personal life, getting really realigned with what's comfortable, with what feels stable, with what feels safe, with what feels secure in your home life and in your personal life, right? And how you can expand on that, how you can grow and expand from that, right? And it's really about letting go of all of the chaos, all of the confusion, all of the complications, all of the, you know, uh, conflict that may be happening in your work or in the world or with long-term goals or, you know, in your external reality. And it's kind of like, hey, get back to your internal reality. Like this is the focus right now. And so it could really be pulling your focus back to your internal reality, your private life, your personal life, and finding that inner sense of security and safety and comfort and, you know, um, pleasure in and simplicity in your personal and private life and somehow this could be also playing into your investments your finances um you know your your goals in terms of your wealth and your money and your resources because venus is in your eighth house so um let me know how that's feeling for you aquarius let me know down below if that's relating and what you are noticing come up i would really really love to hear your feedback and to hear what, what's happening for you if you missed the beginning of this video go back and watch that because you are missing out so we are going to move on to pisces risings so for pisces risings this full moon lunar eclipse is happening for you <clears throat> hold on a second in your third house so this is really about getting back to the here and now getting back to the moment getting back to like simplifying your life and simplifying your day-to-day -day life simplifying the the things in your life you know that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis the environments the people places things etc this could be a time where you're feeling very creative and your intuition and your creativity could be very heightened you could also be learning a lot or paying a lot of attention to what's going on around you like you're definitely being pulled to focus more on your here and now your your actual physical surroundings rather than be very caught up in the chaos the conflict the confusion the you know um whatever <laughs> the, the 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 disturbances going on in terms of the world or in terms of your bigger ideals your bigger belief systems your bigger world views you know like it, it's kind of like you're being pulled to let go of some of the attachments and the internal struggles with that and you're being pulled to like focus on your actual current reality your here and now what feels safe comfortable fulfilling pleasurable what feels stable in this exact moment for you and in your current reality in your current environment and, and in your local environment this could also be a time where <clears throat> you are going to an event or doing an event or dealing with some kind of something to do with the community in your local area um, where you are you know following through on plans or organizing something you know something like that um, but yeah you're, you're pretty much being you're pretty much diving into more of this creativity like more of this sense of like um, stable sustainable conversations secure conversations things that feel more fulfilling in your day-to-day -day life and in those conversations you have in your day-to-day -day life in your physical surroundings and somehow this could also be bringing in the theme of your relationships with other people with uh, Venus in your seventh house so let me know how that's relating down below Pisces I'd really love to hear your feedback and what you're noticing come up for this full moon uh, in Taurus so definitely let me know down below if you missed the beginning you're missing out on a lot it will explain a lot more for you and with that being said, let's move on to Aries. So for Aries risings, last but not least, this lunar eclipse in Taurus is happening in your second house of your money, income, resources, finances, priorities, and values, the things that you own, right? And so this is like bringing up a really big focus, a really big revelation, maybe a really big shift or change um, in terms of that area of life for you. You're definitely seeing things from a more expansive, widened, bigger perspective with this lunar eclipse. It's really bringing this in to kind of liberate you from old attachments, old chaotic, confusing, um, you know, confrontational 
attachments or issues in terms of investments, finances, debt, etc. It's like getting you out of, it's like trying to expand you through letting go, cutting off some of the lack or scarcity or debt or um, issues, conflicts, you know, disturbances within your financial sector to do with other people or to do with other people's money, maybe money that's owed to you or money that you owe to others. It's like cleaning up some of that and really bringing you back so you can expand in terms of what you have, what you own, what you value, what you prioritize, and really get back to that and really get clear on that and expand and grow through that, right? So you can create something more for yourself. And this is gonna be also like a wrapping up of lessons you've been learning here for like the last two years. This could also bring like your job, health, and your day-to-day -day routines and wellness into the picture as well with Venus being in your sixth house in some way. So let me know down below, Aries, if this was helpful. If you missed the beginning of this video, go back and watch it because you're missing out on a lot and it will add a lot more to your horoscope. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Make sure to comment down below. Let me know how everything related. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one.